pet and animal photography can sometimes come with a unique challenge, fences. So in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the background removal AI in Luminar Neo to solve this problem. I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor, and if you want to learn all about photo editing, you're in the right place. So grab a comfy seat and watch what Luminar Neo can do for your images. Now I'm going to show you what I did, and then I'm going to show you how I did this, okay? Are you ready for it? I'm going to go full screen just to, to blow your socks off. Are you ready? I took out the fence, right? And it was much easier than you think. Now, I didn't do a perfect job, but I used the background removal in Luminar to do it. So let me show you how I did that. So what I want to do with this one is I need to do a background removal, okay? So I'm going to start with... Uh, you go to layer properties, okay, and masking, and this is one of the extensions, okay? So it, you need to have the extensions to do this. So you'll find background removal in here. So you just have to run it, and it's going to analyze the image and look for the subject. So once you get here, okay, uh, actually, let me just see if I can choose natural ground. No, I'm going to go with just that. Okay, I'm going to choose remove, and then once it does the removal, then we can edit the mask, okay? And I'm going to show you that. Okay, so now to edit the mask, you need to go down here to refinements brush. What it shows is anything that's blue here is considered the background. Anything that's orange is the subject, and the transparent parts is the transition. So you can use these three brushes to indicate to Luminar what you want to be each item, okay? So now I want to keep all this graphs at the bottom, okay? So I'm just going to literally paint that in and tell Luminar that is part of the object, okay? So I'm gonna go all the way up in here so I get all these little holes, okay? So basically I want all the part of the grass that is in focus, okay? Still doesn't want to get all of that. Oh, I'm doing transition. See, I'm like, why is it going transparent? So I screwed up. I need to paint it with the object brush. There we go. See, I screwed up that. Okay, now it's going to look a whole lot different. So when I do it with the transition brush, it's looking for transparency. Okay, so look at that. Okay, see how that is working really good. Okay, so I want to make sure I get the ear of the mother and all these bits in here, right? So to see it, just click this brush closed, okay? I'm going to go over the tail. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. And this is where you want to use the transition brush around bits that are transparent like this. Okay, so over the tail, okay? So I make sure I get all the hairs of the tail. Okay, not hair of the dog. That's a whole different thing. By the way, where's my hockey fans? Um, I'll come back on the screen in a minute. Uh, I'm wearing my Oilers shirt today because it's game six of our playoff game, and we could take the LA Kings tonight in the first series. So go into an Oilers game watch party. Okay. I'm just going to make this part of the background. Okay, so you're training Luminar as to what is your image, and what is the subject, and what is not, okay? That's what the transition brush and these edge brushes are doing, okay? Now, I'm not super concerned about it because I'm going to be putting green behind it as well, okay? Now, the image that I'm going to be adding, I'm going to go a little bit higher on the grass here. I want to go right up to the fence, okay? And maybe even a little bit higher here. So I want all the grass except getting that fence. Okay. So it's starting to go out of focus. Okay. Like so. Now the edges are not blending so well. So I'm just going to go along the edge of the grass with the transition brush. See how it then faded the grass so it's not a hard edge. So it makes it softer. Right, like so. Now I'm happy with that. Okay. 
I'm going to go in with the erase tool and, and get rid of some of these grasses as well. But for now, uh, I'm happy with that. Yeah, this one bugs me, so I'm going to erase this grass. See that? Works, works just as well as the tools in Lightroom. Okay. Like so. Okay. So we can get rid of some of these other grasses as well, but I want to show you how to add this background image. So now that we've got it cut out, we can add a layer. And what I did was I went to unsplash.com and I found an image of grass. Let me just see if I can find it. Uh, and I searched for grass. Okay, here, let me bring this up on my screen here. So if you don't have unsplash, you can use Unsplash or Pixabay. These are royalty-free um, stock images, okay? So I searched for grass and I wanted a landscape image. And then I just found, I think I used this one, okay? So I wanted one that was all grass and that went out of focus, okay? So I'm gonna add this one as a layer, okay? So there's the grass and it's gonna add it on top, okay? which is not what I want, obviously. And I only want it from there up. So I'm actually going to stretch this one, right? So that the out of focus parts cover the image that I want covered, okay? So I'm just stretching it, okay? And then all we have to do is switch the order of the layers. So we can just drag this one down or the horses up. So we just drag this one down, right? It's taking a moment and there it is okay so now i can see that i still need to stretch this one a little bit more okay so i want to make it a little bigger and then just move it down so i only want the parts that are out of focus okay now this is something that i talked to dima about is when we make something bigger it kind of once the little handles go off the edge we can't reach them anymore so i already talked to him about that so see how I just want green and I don't want it to look like the grass is sharp. Okay. Now, can you see it's not matching up so great because the color is off? Okay. So I'm going to use, first of all, structure to lower the structure and blur it even more a little bit. And I only want it on this bottom part here. So I'm going to just do a linear gradient to blur the bottom part here, this part here. Okay, and then I'm gonna go into color, lower the saturation a little bit, and I'm trying to match these two greens, okay? So I might shift the hue a little bit. So a little bit this way, and then I'm just gonna lower the saturation. Okay, we're getting closer. That looks a little better, and then I still think the yellow is too yellow, so we're gonna lower that. You'll notice that grass has a lot of yellow as well as green. So when you're adjusting the saturation of grass, make sure you do yellow as well, okay? Now I just wanna blur this grass again. So keep in mind, we're on this grass layer, okay? So anything I do on here, for example, if I turn this black and white, okay, you can see that I'm only on the bottom layer and that's how much of it is showing. Okay, so I'm only on this bottom layer. Now I want to blur it a little bit more and I know that either mystical or glow will do a good job of that. Okay, it's definitely too saturated. Let's try Orton effect. Aha, there we go, okay. See what that's doing? Let's just darken it. Now we've got something that looks like it blends a little bit better. And I just want it on this lower part again, okay. like so. So it's only affecting this section. See how it's blurring this part here. Okay. Now, if I'm not happy with the blend, it's kind of wonky over here. All I have to do is go back to the horse image, go back to the background removal, and just blend the mask again. Um, 
When I remove the background, does it automatically make the horses as a transparency file then? The background is transparent, Holly. Um, if I want just the horses with the background transparent to use on another image, I would have to export it as a PNG. So I could do that, but instead of doing that, I just added the grass as a layer here, okay? So if I wanted to use the horses as a different image somewhere else, yes, I would have to export them, okay? Okay, so now I'm going to go back in here and just refine this mask again. See, now I've it's kind of got starting over again because it's it did not do my mask that I wanted. So I've got to remask all of this. So that's kind of another thing that I'm going to be talking to Dima about because when I do remove background, I should be able to get back to the mask and just edit it. So that's something that I didn't mention. Okay, so let's do that. And then I'm just going to do a transition. Okay, transition on the on the tail. And I'm just looking to fade this grass a little bit. Okay. I want it to sort of be a little bit more blended with the other image. So I'm looking for bits of transparency in here, like so. Okay. So I'm just trying to fake it so that it it goes well with the other image. All right. See that? Still looks too green to me. Still looks too green. So I'm going to come back in here. What I could try actually is a LUT because I know that there's actually some nice LUTs that kind of make things a little bit more brown tone. See what these are doing. Ooh, sepia is kind of nice, actually. That just shifts the color a little bit. Right? And I think I want to darken, so that is going to be develop. Okay, remember, we're only affecting this part, okay? So just darken ever so slightly, like so. Okay, now we can take it back to Lightroom, or I can come in here and do a little more erasing. I want to get rid of this stick as well. Let's get rid of that stick. These ones here. So the ones that are kind of touching the horse. When you come up close to the subject like this, be careful. Don't you don't want to overlap because uh, that's when you'll get into some some trouble with the erasing, usually. Okay, so don't touch the horse. You want to keep it separate. So let me just get the tops and this one over here. Okay, so I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so I'm just gonna do this part, see how it does. Okay, so right off the bat, it did some weird stuff. So I'm just gonna restore it. And I'm gonna start here. Okay, so I'm not touching the edge. Same thing here. I'm just going to the edge of the horse's leg. Okay, and then I'm gonna get these other bits over here. See, it's putting fur into the grass, which we don't want. We don't want furry grass. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. So just do little by little, right? Don't expect to do one big swash and it, it does a magic job, right? Do it little by little like this, click by click, okay? Still got fur in the grass. Now we got more fur in the grass. <laughs> So I'm going to fix that um, another way. Okay. We can use the clone tool here in, in Luminar. I'm just going to grab something from here and then clone right there. Something like that. And I'm going to, ah, oh, see, I did undo. I did command of control Z and I undid. So look at that. Uh, a little bit less soft. There we go. Okay, let's try that again. 
want the edge a little bit sharper so I'm not cloning over his leg. There we go. Something like that. Okay, when you're cloning, you want to always keep changing where your, your source is coming from because the challenge is you end up with duplicates. You end up with uh, repeat patterns, and that's what you want to watch out for. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy my teaching style and you want more step-by-step -step instructions to learn the software, check out Luminar Neo, the complete course. You'll find a link to it in the pinned comment below. Click either of the videos on the screen now to watch more photo editing tutorials using Luminar Neo, Lightroom, and Photoshop.